Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Welcome to another reaction video from Coral Glade Grotto. Um, what I'm going to be, be reacting to is a video published on August 15th, 2018 from a website called URLaw.org. I have no idea who's speaking. They don't credential themselves. The comments are turned off on the channel and they direct all traffic to their website. So we don't have credentials as to who's speaking or any, you know, certification of anything they're saying. So I'm just reacting to the words themselves that the narrator is speaking during this video. Hope you enjoy. So in this section, we're going to talk about how to claim your own equity. And this is meant to be an introduction to the syntax class that we're going to hold. Now, we can get into what is syntax and word power. I think if you'll understand here just a minute, I'm going to give you some examples of information that you already know. And in fact, I'm going to give you, I hope you're taking notes tonight, because I'm going to give you not 100, but 200% proof that what I'm going to tell you how to do is valid. syntax class and he's going to give 200% proof although I'm not sure how it's possible to give anything greater than 100% but I guess we'll see here then how you apply it will determine whether it works because it has worked um, I had to I will start off with uh, an example that just happened in fact in the class I'll show you the video proof of this um, there was a debt collector from a couple of years ago the law firm communicated with me with a collect, you know, law firms are typically buy it paper and then they collect on debt paper, right? Well, they they said, well, we're going to collect this, we want to make payment arrangements and blah, 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 blah. Typical debt collector stuff. You have to understand everything, everything they're just sending you is an offer to enter into an agreement, but it's not a contract. This is going to be a very important concept to learn in the class. They cannot live in the world of contracts. They can only live in the world of offer and acceptance. Well, see, here's the thing. With my knowledge, everything is contract. Even if it's offer and acceptance, which are fiction terms, it's contract. If you want something from someone, you have to agree to their terms and conditions. Their offer, you agree to it. Now we have contract. It's contract. Everything is contract. And you have to volunteer. Everything in their courts, everything they're doing, whether you think you are or not, you're volunteering for. 
And every step of the way, they're going to ask you questions. You're going to say yes or no, sir, and move forward. Well, in this case, they sent me a debt collector letter saying we are, we're representing XYZ Bank. And I'll say it was U.S. Bank to keep the story straight. U.S. Bank. And, um, you know, we're here to collect this money. And I gave them one of our, our – you can have access to these these – uh, debt collector letters, but I've used those before, and in fact, I used it years ago on the same matter with another law firm, and it worked fine. They did, after three or four letters, they finally kind of went away. What I did differently this time, though, is I put together a brief letter, and then I syntaxed the document. Now, what I did when I syntaxed is I broke down words and issues, and, and I'm going to cover a few of these here in just a minute, but I broke down words that start with D-E and R-E and A followed by two consonants. Talking about here is not syntax. What he's talking about here is parse. When you break down the particles of a word and parse them, like he's just talking about, D E, R E, things like that. That's parse. I'm beginning to get the distinct impression that this individual, whoever it is, I don't know who it is, they don't identify or credential themselves. They don't know what syntax is, which is it's interesting. It's in boxes, things like that. Again, we'll cover all this in the class. But I that those markings and the way I presented it on that document, along with my one dollar stamp, thumbprint, a certain way of autographing my name, and a copyright copy claim statement on there, front and back. When I did that. I sent it to him with certified mail, and then before the green card came back, that's the return receipt card, when I sent it to them, I got a FedEx package in the mail. And the FedEx package basically saying, we apologize, we will cease and desist collection. Uh, basically, you know, we, we have the right to collect in the future, but, you know, we're going to cease and desist. <laughs> they know what was coming next. I've never seen a debt collector action with a public entity of that nature shut down that quick. So I know it worked. But then recently, something totally out of the blue happened. Okay. I do want to say here that I'm a big fan of whatever works. If something works, cool. So even though what he thought he did was syntax, when really it was par se, it still worked. So imagine if someone does something like this and doesn't know what they're doing through nascience and it's successful, then imagine what you could do if you do know what you're doing. I was doing some credit um, work essentially to clean up some credit. You know, how you can work on your credit rating and clear up your credit reports and whatnot. I actually have an organization who we refer people to. Their link is in the premium member page. They were doing the work for us. They do amazing uh, debt correction work. Well, anyway, they had sent them a letter, not about debt collector matters, but simply we want disclosure of certain things. For What's interesting about this is that he's talking about a credit report. A credit report is based on one's debt not one's credit. So the more debt you have and are paying on, the better your credit score. It's based on the debt market, negative condition of state. Very basic stuff about credit. Well, apparently that debt has been sold by USAA Bank, another bank, different bank, to the same law firm that I beat up before. Well, the law firm responded to me out of the blue. We didn't even expect this. Basically saying, uh, we are we have ceased and desist collecting on this matter. I mean, I noticed, remember, I haven't sent them a letter, one of my debt collector letters. They sent me a letter ahead of time saying, we were going to, we are ceasing and desist, we're going to do a cease and desist collecting on this matter. We apologize for any inconvenience. Here are some of the documents you asked for, but this, this, uh, these papers no longer belong to us. You have to talk with your bank. <laughs> so they literally quit before I could do the syntax this time. They don't want anything to do with me because they know what's coming next. It involves USC 1001 and various 
uh, postal fraud matters that would come up. Okay, so he's using, he's using the fiction against the fiction. Let me make this clear right now because it is clear to me that this individual is not using correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. Not in any sense of the word. He's using parse to disqualify documents. That's the power of this technology. You say, well, that's just a debt collector. I assure you, from the examples I've seen, the people I've learned much of this from, I've seen far more examples of that. We've seen court cases and divorce cases and debt collector cases and lawsuits and tickets and tax cases and all kinds of things that this can be used to attack. Yet, we do it in a way where we're not attacking it. We do it in a way where we're asking questions. And we create forensic evidence. Now, this is a service we can also provide for you, by the way. It's available now if you want syntax and work done. And some people like that because then I'll actually do it for you. You get an example of it, and you'll learn by seeing it actually done. But so he's offering a paid service to syntax people's documents. Now, you know, people have asked me to do that for them. But what I've found is that basically someone syntaxing a document for you is almost worthless if the person receiving the document has no closure on what's happening on the document. In other words, if someone syntaxes a document for me and I have no idea what the hell's going on, why these numbers are on the document or why this is an adverb or that's a verb or that's an adjective or that's a pronoun, then it's going to be worthless to me because I can't give closure to anything on the document. I'm not an authority of the document because I didn't author it. The person who syntaxed it authored it. They're the authority. That's the first thing. The second thing is what he's talking about is not syntax. What you would be paying him for is to parse the document. Completely different. As he said, you know, it was effective for him. And it is a technique you can use, but it is not correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It's simply one element of it, per se. Certainly not syntax. This, this class will teach you much of, well, most of what you need to know to tackle these matters in this upcoming class. And if you're coming in late after the class starts, that's okay too. You can just go, go back and start watching the videos and look at the examples. This class will probably take eight to 12 weeks. I don't know exactly because I haven't given the class yet. I don't know how quickly the class is going to absorb the material, but it will all be recorded and available to our premium members only. So if you're a premium member of your law, you're in luck. You get this material included. What's interesting about um, what he's talking about there, the UR Law website, the website, the premium membership, what I found out a couple years ago was that in their premium membership area, they provide a link to my channel. If people wanted to learn syntax, correct sentence structure, communication, parts of syntax grammar. So they included my free videos in their paid membership. If you want additional services like syntax work, we ought to look up the details on that. The bottom line is, is we, we can take a document and we, we syntax it a certain way. We mark it all up. It will have maybe hundreds of marks on it. And these marks are asking questions. Okay. Definitely talking about part say. He didn't say anything about numbers. He's talking about part say. Pointing out particles of negation. What I would call particles of negation. And he talks about asking questions. That's how I know it's not correct sentence structure because in correct sentence structure, communication, part say, syntax, grammar, questions are not asked. Claims are made, statements are made, authorizations are created. Not here to ask questions. We're here to give closure. That's how I know what he's talking about it has nothing to do with quantum grammar. About words, about language, about style, about spacing, about uh, symbols, about barks, barks codes that are on there. These are all things that affect that piece of paper as a contract and probably void it as a contract because 
there's no full disclosure and consideration and a meeting of the minds as to what it means. There's no definitions provided of words that we're asking about. And guess what? A contract is not a contract if those kinds of questions exist. And he's kind of dipping into common law there, the meeting of the minds thing. Uh, what he's saying is correct about as far as closure being given to the terms and conditions. The definitions, which are, you wouldn't use the word definition because definition means no finite contract. Um, with correct sentence structure, it's one word, one meaning. And so you would have to include a dictionary with your contract with finite means. Not definitions, but finite means. But of course, he's not talking about correct sentence structure here. And this could be a sentencing agreement, a probation agreement. I think of anything that they write in legalese, we can ask questions about. And by asking, all we're asking for is technically called a suit for correct name and language performance when we respond. We're setting them up. They'll, they'll know that we've caught them violating a whole bunch of laws just by asking, and, but, without, but without accusing. That's the beauty of this. We don't accuse. We just want them to go away, right, for the most part. A lot of people want to get money because they've been wronged. I get that. But my first objective is to just get the thing to go away. So in this class, we're going to learn how to sue for the correct name and language performance. My question is, how can you do what he's saying if you yourself don't know what a correct name or grammar performance is. If you yourself do not know how to write using correct sentence structure communication, then you don't have a position to criticize someone else's grammar. That's just rule one, rule equal, you know, simple, basic, rudimentary judge mechanics. Uh, are they using a nom de gore name for you and for them? That is a name with a middle initial. Nobody here was born with a, just a middle initial, well, typically anyway, but yet they're calling you that. No, they're calling you a nom de gour. Look it up. It's a term that means a fictional thing, basically. So you'll first catch that, then you'll start asking for language performance. And then you'll, you could probably more effectively, and whatever you're, however you're approaching things, I think you should get this in as evidence in your case and start asking questions. Asking, asking, asking. The king asks the questions in his court. He is as king. What I would say is there is no asking. If you're a king, you make authorizations and give commands, right? There's no asking questions. If you're the authority, you already have the answers. So you can more effectively deal with court, collections, tax, mortgages, suits, child support issues, government agencies, attorneys. By the way, every attorney has got an issue. If you watch that other video about foreign registration, uh, that just came out. But anyway, um, all are regularly using language fraud. And all you have to do is highlight it, ask questions, which is essentially a denial of their offer to contract without fighting. You're not saying denied. You're saying, hey, I answer these questions and correct them, and then we can proceed. That's actually a conditional acceptance. Puts you in honor, puts you in control. So we ask for correction. And if they control is not honor. Control has a particle of negation in it, contra, and control implies that something is being forced to do something. Control implies coercion. They don't correct the flaws, and they're sending these offers to the mail. Well, that's also a postal fraud that they've committed. And they've probably, I've never yet seen them give clear definitions and try to answer this because they're using word art tricks on you, and you've just caught them at it by asking the questions. So I'm going to give, I'm going to give you some examples here. Uh, and I hope that you're paying very close attention. I'm going to give you 200% proof. Now, I just, as I was preparing for this, I opened up just a general, generic, it's called uh, Barron's Dictionary of Legal Terms. And I just started looking up words that start with D-E and then have a consonant following it, or D-I and have a consonant following, or starts with an A followed by two consonants, or uh, R, E, or R, I followed by a consonant. Those are trigger words because 
they can have dual meanings, and you'd never know which meaning they're referring to. Every word in a fiction dictionary, in an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun dictionary has multiple meanings. Not just what he's taught, I mean, what he's saying is true, but it's true for every word in fiction Bible. For, and every paper you're dealing with is the four corner rule applies. It means whatever, it, whatever's within that document is the limit of what there is. Keep in mind that every single thing he's talked about for the last 15 minutes has nothing to do with syntax, which is the title of the video, Syntax Word Power Class. The Syntax Word Power Class has nothing to do with syntax. And if they don't give you definitions of these things, and they're using this style of writing that has positive and negative meanings in the same sentence, well, you've just disqualified the document. Does that make sense? Just take a few words out of a document and it's defective. It's no longer a contract. It never was a contract. Um, we can do this with A as well. Like asymmetrical, not symmetrical. Acceleration clause. They do that on mortgages. That's a negative. There's no acceleration. Assumption of liability means no assumption. They want you to assume liability for the charges. But assume itself is a no assumption. Yet, if you let it go, you've agreed to it. So you've got to start learning how to read these words, break them down. That is true what you just said there. If you don't... Uh give correspondence back to these things, if you ignore them, they will take it as tacit agreement for sure in the fiction. Ask questions, mark the page up for the right way, and then all kinds of things can happen. Because they'll know, they've got to, they've got to answer these questions. They can't put you into a contract. As a matter of fact, we'll talk about in class that you could make an American Disabilities Act claim when they do use this language on you because they're putting you into a legal situation without giving you an interpreter who can actually interpret the words for you, which is what they call the attorney. But he, even he can't do this. I believe me, I've tested this on attorneys. They don't know this. So if they can't help you, then who's going to provide you the, where's the interpreter? You know, we can't proceed until I've got this. Do you see how valuable this might be? Then there's the rules of boxing. That's always a fun one. Learning how to identify everything in a parentheses or in a square box, or in a boxing symbol, or in quotes, in many instances, is an omission from the page because it's a contract within itself, the four corners rule. And italics, and also long dashes. So that's a fun one to identify. Well, here look at property tax statements, just nothing but boxes. Um, a lien, <laughs> IRS lien, nothing but boxes. There's all kinds of defects with these documents. And if you can just simply not get into the legal arguments and simply stay on the defects in the contract, that's the arena you can win because you all questions are answered. Because they cannot tell you to do something if you don't understand. And if you don't, understand, don't accept the offer by not understanding, you can tie these things up and flip the case right on them. So that's the idea of the training. We'll get into much more details of it soon, but I just want to give you that quick overview. Uh, if you're a mem premium member of URLaw.org, you'll get full access to all this. Keep your membership current. Tell others about it. This will be something that you will study, and then you'll have to study and study and study again. We have so we have this website providing premium content for members, talking about par se but claiming to be teaching syntax. We have hundreds of pages of examples for you to start getting the, learning the style of identifying these things and reading this way. And ultimately, we'll take it to the point where you can actually write in what's called now time language. Some of you might have heard of David Wynn Miller, and I heard that he might have passed recently. I haven't confirmed that. Uh, but he his, was one of the leaders in, in discovering this way of looking at words. People say, well, he just made up a bunch of stuff. In actuality, he didn't invent it. 
Uh, I've been trained by people that have even a more advanced knowledge of it, and I try to put it in a very practical way of... He's been trained by people who are more advanced than Colin David after win Colin Miller, and yet he doesn't even know what syntax is. He doesn't know the difference between parse and syntax. And of course, he's not credentialing himself, whoever this individual is, and he's not credentialing uh, any of the people who taught him, so there's no transparency here. So what he's basically giving us is an opinion. There's no way to certify anything he's saying. So I guess you just have to take his word for it. Thinking and a very practical way of looking at it, whereas I, my only critique, critique of him is he's so far advanced, he's on another planet, and then he mixes it in with, with a bunch of strange stories. Uh, you know, I don't need it. And now he's just saying that Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller was so far advanced, but yet he learned from people that are way more advanced than David, but doesn't know the difference between syntax and parse. And doesn't even, in this, in this 18 minutes of the video, has not said one single thing about syntax. It's mind-boggling. Do that. I just want you to just look at the words, look at the defects, and then once you learn how to do that, then we'll get into the advanced side of how to write in now time real language. Because, for example, um, let's see if I come up with, here's another thing that they do to you, for example. Um, hang on, let's see, I'm trying to find an example. Uh, they might tell you, they'll, they'll use sentences that have a positive and negative meaning in them. Well, if you know things about grammar, you have to keep the context the same. So it might say, the, the stated defendant shall plead guilty to an offense he committed. Well, there's a problem with that sentence, and we'll break it down for you. There, there's no actual noun in the sentence. That's a problem. But also, shall and committed are opposite meaning words in the same sentence. So the sentence itself is a wash. It's literally like if you put white out through it on the page and then looked at the page. What does it say? That's the power you'll have once you get through this course. So uh, I won't spend any more time on this at this time. Get just, just start following along. Watch for notices for those calls. Uh, they will be announced uh, and the schedule, most likely on Thursday morning, specific time. More specific details will be on the website. Thanks again. Having people pay money to learn what they think is syntax when it has nothing, zero to do with syntax. Well, that was definitely an eye-opener. Uh, I know this is an old video. I guess it would have been around 2018 when David Wynn Miller passed away. But uh, I don't know how what they're doing now. Maybe they've learned what syntax is. Hopefully maybe they've checked out my YouTube channel that they uh, charge people for on their website in the premium site uh, but uh, yeah I hope this was uh, helpful to some of you people out there who perhaps are thinking of contracting with these people or have already contracted with these people that if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar you can uh, check out my youtube channel www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass and I have over 300 videos concerning the three elements of correct sentence structure. Correct sentence structure communication, par se, which this gentleman talked about, syntax, which this gentleman didn't talk about, and it's all part of the grammar. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.